Welcome to another episode of Nothing Personal. If you would, please hit that like and subscribe button. It goes a long way. We really appreciate it, especially if you enjoy the content. And this week, Joe has the Christian house. Joe, it's all yours. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. On this episode, as uh, my co-host Alan mentioned, we are doing the new Christie 4K 860. This is a great value DLP projector. It's got everything you can ask for. They're claiming 8,500 lumens, which is super, super bright. 33 pound compact case. It's actually sitting off to my side right here. And as you can see, it's not huge. Because of the five-year warranty as well, which is you know industry best. I don't see many uh, other companies offering that long of a warranty. My written review is done. I will be posting uh, inside the comment section a link to that so you can also read everything because I'm not going to go over every single thing I'm going to do in that. But at least on this, we'll go over some pictures and discuss a couple things. Right here is the CIC, Christy Intelligent Camera. This is amazing. It was super, super easy to hook up. And as you can see in the picture behind me, two little screws hold it in. It's pretty nice. It's pretty stable. As you can see, I'm trying to move it here and it's, it doesn't move. It's a USB, plugs into the back of your projector. And then all you do is you take your trusted remote, which I have right here. This is, we'll get into this in a minute. This is a beautiful remote. My favorite projector remote I've ever had, actually. And you go right into the GUI menu system and you can do autofocus, which is really, really nice. Looks like that behind me. Yeah, uh, be careful if you're <laughs> you know, prone to seizures because that could actually probably trigger something like that. I was told by a couple of people. But looking at it, I thought I was always the best at using my binoculars to get in, zoom, and get the that pixel, you know, perfect razor sharpness. Well, after doing the uh, CIC, letting it do it, I, I'm just shocked. It was able to get like just a notch, maybe half a notch better than I got. But you know what? I'm happy with my human hit, but you know what? This camera actually did a little bit better, which is saying a lot. I've been doing this for too long. So I was really impressed with that. And obviously it does color uniformity. Uh, the skin tones, I will say right off the bat, they were immediately looking a little bit better. Now, I just did it right out of the box before I tweaked or did anything to my, my projector here. I just wanted to see what it would do raw out of the box with this CIC. Because I know a couple of people are already ordering it with the CIC. That, so I just wanted to let them know, rest assured, that it makes everything look better. This is a test pattern that's included, and you can use this to confirm some of your findings as well. I'm kind of in the way, but there's you have colors in a box. And then obviously looking at the Christie, if, if we go past the camera here for a second, contrast with real black enabled is they're claiming three million to one. I will say it looks amazing. The screenshots I've seen and I've been able to take, I mean, they just look terrific. Uh, all the movies we've watched, the scary movies, the dark movies, they look terrific on this. The shadow detail, everything is in there that you're looking for. The value for this projector, the price, it's it's truly amazing what they were able to come up with. 3D. So this is different with the Christie here. I was actually shocked. So there is a passive option on here, which sounds hard hard to believe for home use, you would have that option. But it reminds me of going into movies and I'm handing these little glasses. Sure, it's polarized cir circular type glasses. They're not active. Now, it does do active 3D, and I have my little emitter that I've used for Sony and other ones and JVCs that works perfect with it. And you can use, you know, their glasses, which look amazing, active. You know, you have to charge them, they're ready to go. But the um, simple passive glasses you can just hand out to people as they walk in your room and sit down is pretty cool, too. I love having that as a home option because if you have a room of 10 people, it's way easier to, and not have to worry about someone's glasses going out halfway through the movie. Passive, you have to have a silver screen, right? You have to have a screen that is polarized. Yes, they recommend silver screen and all that good stuff in there too. So, but I just, I'm just shocked that they're actually offering that with this projector. So what I discovered right away with the Christie 4K 860 is you have your Dyna Black option as well. And then you, their terminology is called Real Black. So the big difference is... Dino Black, obviously, you get that full all array of lights all on the screen at once. That's really good. Your black levels are pretty good. It's nice, especially for sports, all that good stuff. But then for those who love, and I know there's a lot of people out there that do these days, the full out, you know, fade the black scenes moments when the, your room goes completely pitch black. I mean, you can't see anything. That's where the real black comes into, into play. And the neat thing is it makes the blacks obviously inky black, but as you're watching a movie and it, it, those type of scenes happen, it's pretty amazing how it just goes instant, you know, dark. And all of a sudden you can't see your hand in front of your face. It's pretty wild when that happens in some of the scenes like Kingdom of Planet of the Apes or some of the beginning of Passengers or Mad Max Fury Road. 
those are in my uh, review in the beginning. I have those samples. They're, they're at the bottom of my page. Those three videos are there as well as this one. And Joe, you're talking the lasers literally turn off, right? So there's no light emitting whatsoever from the projector. Right. So it completely just goes off. And the cool thing is you have a timer in there that tells you your laser light timing hours and the times that the laser is actually off. It gives you the full statistics on both of those in your in your information screen. I love it that they do that. It just tells us what we're looking at. And then I wanted to segue back into 3D for a second since we were talking about glasses. There's the emitter there. So looking at 3D, here is the emitter I'm using. And there's JVC glasses behind it. I have um, High Shock and Expand, all your other kinds of brands that are for active glasses. I just thought that that was pretty cool to show that. The emitter hooks up. There's a BNC plug in the back of the projector. goes right into it, and you can just pick. So then, of course, testing-wise, I would jump right back into my favorite, which is IMAX's Under the Sea in 3D. This is just a title screen, but you can see how profound the words are. And, of course, the famous potato codfish. <laughs> it said where I show everybody, and some people do really duck. It comes close to your face. And as you can see, the Christie handles it pretty nicely. I'm trying to move my head out of the way. There you go. Now I can get a good look at it. And one thing I did notice this fish is a little wider with the other brands, but the Christie with its color was able to grab all that in 3D. It's pretty cool. The color is just terrific in 3D. It handles everything you want 3D wise nicely. Okay. Joe, so is that, the uh, 3D is that in 2K or 4K? So the 3D that says it, it does do it in 4K on the Christie, which I thought was really impressive. A lot of your projectors keep it at 1080p. So that was interesting to know that Christie is handling it that way. There, the Christie is up on my ceiling, as you can see, not very big. With everything off in my room, I can barely hear it on. Once I start a movie, I cannot even hear it. It's 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 actually impressive. They claim 34 dB for the 8,500 lumens that it's doing. And you'd expect it to be way louder. And then jumping back in, back to the Dynablack, looking at the statistics there, I just want everyone to know that you know, obviously it's all about taste and what you want. It's not, there's never a right one. You know, everyone has their own favorites, um, depending on what you like. And I don't know. I mean, I kind of obviously lean towards the real black because I love the pitch blackness in the room. And my guests all gasp where they they wonder what's going on. Did the projector turn off for a second when the first time it happens during a movie? And I got to warn them. No, it did not. But I do, again, have people who don't like it. They think it's like turning off a light switch off and on. They're like, you know, it, it's different. You just got to get used to it and depend on if you're immersive or not, I do have people who love the Dino Black and they say, you know what, I don't want that to happen. I just want my movie to stay on and I want to stay in the movie, but not, you know, outside the movie. That's a good way to put it. You know, I'd like to comment and let people know that it, it in some ways, uh, emulates the Christie Eclipse, the Dolby Vision projector. That goes to complete black as well, but for a heck of a lot more money. <laughs> I was going to say, yes. For a heck of a lot more money. And speaking of Eclipse, we'll be they'll be debuting that and showing that next week, I believe, when we go to Cedia. Well, I'll be at Cedia next week. That's going to be fun to check out the Eclipse while it's there. So it's hard for you to see that. I'll just read off a couple of them. Your adjustments. You can adjust speed in there. You know how fast it goes. The ranges from the you know black and down to low. During Dino Black, we're talking. You can just adjust all the correctness, the color correctness, the you can make it more aggressive or less aggressive. So the strength, the values of the strengths, you can go higher, lower, you, you have zero to three. The higher the option, the stronger the correction for contrast. We're talking about Dino Black again here. And then um, your level, your light level, you have 50 to 100% under Dino Black. So you can go all the way 100% have your screen as you know wildly light as possible. This is really nice. They have a lights out timer. You can uh, have it detect black content. The ranges goes from the zeros to the twenties, and it's really nice because you can you know make it turn off depending on how quick you want it to go too. The light out signal zero to five, zero being the deepest darkest black you can go, and five obviously being still black but you know a lighter black. But obviously zeros you know my favorite of course. There's no way I'm gonna uh, sacrifice any of the black level. I'm gonna be Moving off a of zero, I might as well be on Dino Black the way I look at it in that way, in that regard. And then jumping into uh, HDR, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. So it comes in a few different flavors here, as you can see. Auto it just detects it and decides how it wants to do it. But HDR one, it it's, makes your screen super bright. My taste personally, I kind of like the HDR two, and it mentions that it's you know for standard, it looks more natural. 
the HDR effect. And I kind of gravitate towards that one, even before I even looked at the, the manual here and I put up behind me what it's saying it's doing. I kind of always just liked HDR two to begin with. So that was the one I favored, but obviously it's taste. Someone else may jump in and say they like three or four. You never know. We're all different. And that's what makes this projector cool. There's something for everybody and everyone's tastes. I prefer five and six. <laughs> I was going to say the only two that are not on there. And then <laughs> in my show, my uh, review, I mentioned Dexter. We have a Dexter club. We're nerds. We've been watching Dexter for a long time and we're glad it's back again. And every Sunday night we get together and, it was just nice that the Christie um, 860 did a great job. I didn't have to tweak it all. I didn't grab the remote, didn't do anything with the remote. It just, as as the show came on, it just looked perfect. And I loved it. And that's an actual screenshot at the beginning of the show, how good it looked. And in a sense, I brought up the remote again. Let's discuss the remote live for a second. I do it in my review, but here as well. So this is a really cool remote. I love it, not just because it turns blue, the colors, one of my favorite colors, but... You can do zoom, focus, lens, vertical shift, horizontal. You can do all that just from this remote. You don't have to dig deep into a menu to do it. And I love that, that you can just do that. And then you have your shutter button or, you know, your on off for the image and right in the top middle, which is really it makes it easy to mess with. Keystone also, but I, I don't obviously recommend ever using Keystone. Most people don't because they, you, can, you know, deteriorate your image a little bit. But just looking at the remote again, uh, it's just there's a really cool hotkey, which I find awesome. You give you 10 different options that you can assign it to be whatever you want. And I picked personally details. Details is really nice. It's a sharpness tool. You can either leave it off, which is just normal, basic, like film, like simple, natural looking look. Or you go hotkey details high or max maximum. But high to me is, the, is a nice spot to be, especially for sports. It just brings out more detail, makes it sharper the image. Sure, it's a trick, but you know what? It's a cool trick, and it looks really nice. It's eye candy trick. Maximum, I just think, is too much. But I really like the high option on that. So I made my my um, you know, my know hotkey high for that for details. But you can obviously hit it a few times and change it, which is really nice. Another nice thing on the remote is the PIP. For those who <laughs> are uh, probably younger and don't realize, picture in picture. This was a huge thing when it first came out. And I remember back in the 2000s, yes, I'm dating myself a little bit there, but I remember being able to do that on my TVs, like my Sony TVs, my big CRT TVs, other TVs like that, the Bravia special editions. You could put two different sources on at the same time, and it was always really cool to have that option. I know YouTube TV and other ones have it where it's built in, but I mean, for those, I mean, if you are, I don't care, gambling or doing something, you can keep an eye on the game, basketball, football, whatever you're doing, and have a movie on, on the opposite side of the screen, which is over here. So I think that's really nice. But the remote allows you to turn it on and off. You can swap, switch sides instantly. You can make one size bigger, one size smaller, or you can even make it top or bottom, your picture in picture. So you don't have to keep it side by side. I just love that the remote has all that, the options like directly on it. It makes life 10 times easier if you are going to do any picture in picture. And you never know. A lot of people act like they're not going to, but you know, you never know at any time you may want to try and do something or watch something else while you're watching something else. Keep an eye on something else. Whatever. The point is, maybe there's a huge news story going on and you want to have it, you know, off to the side during the game or something. It's just nice to have these options. I love it. It's perfect. My brother came over. We were watching his Bears play the Chiefs that night. His night the Bears came back and won in the last second drive. No, I'm not a Bears fan. But anyway, my majority of my family is. But the point is, they were all cheering and clapping. I know it was just preseason, but it was pretty wild. About five times in the first quarter alone, I kept hearing how great the picture looked. And now it was, you're really at the game, and it's clear. And we had lights on at least halfway. And you can see how bright it looks behind me. You, know, you can see Patrick Mahomes there lining up to take the snap. But the graphics look good. You can just see how clear it is. It's a little like we were in the stands there, as you can see. And then, obviously, the, um, the huddles looked really good, you know, up close. The players just look terrific there as you're looking at their helmets and the cl clarity. Everyone was just like, wow, it just looks terrific. And of course, a different game was the Cowboy game. That was on another night. But just saying, it, whatever we do with this, um, it just looks good to Christie so far. We've been super happy with it and all of our things we've watched. Obviously, I did the passenger test. There's Chris Pratt behind me. Looks terrific. It's super good, obviously. His face, his expressions, waking up, 
I did smile too. She looks terrific behind me. When you're looking for black level, there it is. That's that's your uh, Christie Row black technology working. Look around her. It's it's so dark over here, and you can see her perfectly in the middle of it. Conjuring the intro title. I love to use this for a test. You know, you see your yellow title that says the Conjuring. As I'm trying to move out of the way for you to see, there you go. It's even better. And then you have the black around it. It just looks really nice. It's sharp, clear. It looks like it's floating in your room when you're sitting there and you're watching it. The intro to this movie is pretty intense. So right after that moment, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It starts showing the words, talking about Lorraine and, you know, the, the couple that's involved in all of this. And all of a sudden, boom, it shows this up on the screen. And you're just like, wow, why am I even watching this movie as your heart's beating fast? And then you see this like floating in the room, The Conjuring. This little girl from Smile 2 just looks terrific up front. Her face, everything, the marker, she's writing, putting an autograph on her shirt. She keeps the same expression the entire scene. And you, in person, you can see inside of her, her braces. You can see everything in there. It's pretty crazy. But she does a good job. And I just want to show a picture of that because it's so clear. Dangerous Animals. Really intense movie. Not for the faint of heart, obviously. But it's a really good movie if you're bored and want to check out something and don't mind sharks. But even like in the beginning of that movie, this is a nice bright scene. It just looks terrific. It's way better in person, obviously, because you're going to look at this on your screen and see it. But in person, this is just a good, good um, sample. And this is something I wanted to show. <clears throat> I'm going to hide here in the middle. So the image off to my left is the normal image out of the box. The image off to the right, it's going to be hard for you probably to see. I, I have it on my uh, written review where you can see a little bit better. But her eyes. It's really dark around, especially her right eye, the side over here. Look over here and then look over there on this side over here. It's darker in there, especially in person. But it's after the CIC calibration, you can see all the way around the skin. <clears throat> around her eye, it looks perfect. So that's one thing it did correct. And you can almost see some of it on the left. Look at her side of her face over here versus over there. You can see it's lighter. It looks a little bit more you know, natural. Then I did the same thing with this one, no, except this time I reversed it. Normal out of the box, and then CIC um, breakdown. Let you see normal mainly there. And then I'll hop over here and there's CIC. Almost the same type of effect where you can see a little bit more detail. The face just looks a little bit better, more natural. So in closing, the best compliment I can give the Christie 4K860 is it's amazing. I mean, seriously, where else are you going to find this much value, this much gadgetry that you can do it's like a swiss army knife it can do everything for its price and it is definitely a dlp game changer i mean you get five years warranty which is unheard of you get three million one contrast when you enable the real black feature which is my favorite which i showed you a little bit ago it's 8500 lumens can't beat that two hdmi ins one out ethernet connection for fast firmware updating when the time comes I'm just saying there's it's it's a lot in it. You get the best remote in the industry as far as I'm concerned, for projectors at least. I mean, I'm just trying to find out any other value. It's only 33 pounds, 34 dB for sound, which you can barely even hear it. Doesn't emit a lot of heat. Small input in your room, as you can see behind me, above my head here. And I there's you're going to be hard pressed to find something that's going to be able to do what this can do for the money. So the last thing I like to say is obviously thanks for popping by. But besides that, like my co-host Alan said in the beginning, please make sure you like and subscribe. That does make a difference, and we appreciate that. And if you happen to see me at CDO, please don't be afraid to say hi. I should be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. My point is, if you see me, feel free to come up to me. Um, it should be exciting time. Don't forget to check out the Christie booth at CDO. That's right. And Christy will be there as well as JVC, Sim2, and a few other other companies that we love to discuss on our show. We're going to have a good time meeting all of our friends there. And again, if you're out there, say hi. It should be an exciting time in Denver. And if anybody's interested in this projector, reach out to Joe. Thank you, everybody. We'll